Hi, my name is Alicia Thomas Searcy. I am your candidate for state school superintendent, and it's been a pleasure hanging out with my friends here at the Atlanta Voice. Tell us about your experience and why you're running to be Georgia's next state superintendent. I'm a graduate of Spelman College, a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I'm the first African American elected to the Georgia House of Representatives from Cobb County. I was elected at the ripe old age of 23 and I served six terms. And during all of my time in the legislature, I focused on our public education system and public education policy. When I left the legislature in 2014, went back to school, got a master's degree in educational leadership, and went through two superintendent training programs. And then I became a superintendent. So I've run schools before as a, state, as a, as a local superintendent. I am a former state legislator, so I have policy experience. And the job of state school superintendent is really a policy and an education job. And so I'm uniquely qualified in my particular race. I'm the only candidate that has that experience. And then I'm also a mom of three school-aged children, and so I am navigating schools like lots of other mamas and daddies, um, trying to make sure that we have a high-quality public education for all of our children. And so I'm running because we need a state school superintendent who is experienced, who is qualified, who is passionate, who has a sense of urgency to get education right for our kids, not in five and 10 years, but right now. What three issues do you think the next state superintendent will have to handle once you are hopefully elected to this position? I think the most pressing issue facing education right now in our education system is teachers, is uh, making sure that they have the resources that they need in their classrooms, that we are eliminating some of the paperwork that they have to do, that we address their salaries, which is very low in Georgia, and I think most importantly that we're addressing their morale. Teachers are frustrated. Um, they're leaving in droves, and it's our responsibility as education leaders to hear them, to listen to the concerns that they have and address those needs. Number two uh, is empowering parents. I have the support of a number of clergy from across the state, uh, and for me, it is, I'm grateful to have their support. I also see that support as a roadmap to partner with churches across this state um, to work with parents, to empower them, to give them the tools they need so that they can be equal partners in our public education system. And number three, the one that I'm most excited about, I want to work with teachers, with parents, with students, with the business and faith leaders to reimagine public education. When I think about where we are now, and you, if you were to Google right now what school looked like in the 1700s, it looks exactly the same as it does in 2022. And so the question we have to ask ourselves is, how are we still delivering a telegram education to a TikTok generation? So we have to reimagine what public education looks like in our schools. How do you think the state of Georgia compares amongst other states regarding education and support for students and their families? Ooh. I think in comparison to other states, Georgia does well in some areas. So for example, we have um, universal pre-K and it's free to all four-year-olds in our state. Now the question of course is, are families accessing it? But when it comes to offering a program and that it's funded publicly to ensure that all four-year-olds have access, that's where Georgia is leading. And we have to make more investments in early childhood education so that when students are coming to us in kindergarten and beyond that they are prepared. Uh, where we don't compare so well is when we talk about reading and math scores for our students in Georgia, um, especially our students of color. They're struggling uh, and it's not them, perhaps it is our system that is not adequately preparing them. And so I am happy to see that our state is rewriting our curriculum when it comes to reading and math. We have a long way to go 
uh, to bring equity and make sure that all of our students, regardless of their zip code, are reading at high levels, are prepared when they graduate from high school, and really have the skills that, they, that we want them to um, have when they graduate from high school and leave our system. I want to double back for a second because you did highlight the fact, you know, you were young, you were the youngest elected to the legislature in Cobb County. I currently cover the legislature for the Atlanta Voice. So this question is really, really relevant. Okay. Um, how well do you work with those you disagree with? Hmm. So I served 12 years in the State House of Representatives in a Republican controlled legislature. And my first few years, I was mad every day because we, we dealt with some of the most challenging issues. Um, but I realized that being mad every day wasn't getting anything done. And so I had to rethink my approach and instead started building relationships. And I built relationships specifically with those across the aisle who might disagree with me on Medicaid or some other health care issue, or they voted, they voted a different way than I did when it came to uh, voter issues. But I found uh, common ground on education. And so I leveraged those relationships. I found those shared values that we have to do things on behalf of kids. And so I get along with those that I disagree with, number one, because I, I try to see them as humans and I make sure that they can see me as a human um, who has a family and children that I care about just like they care about theirs, that ultimately we want the same things. And so I think if you can separate that there may be some disagreement, uh, we may have separate and different voting records, but a good leader finds a way to find common ground and work together, especially when it comes to doing what's best for children. So I'm proud of the track record that I have in the legislature. I pass a number of bills, both as an author and a co-author. Um, and you don't do that in a Republican-controlled legislature as a Democrat if you don't have relationships, um, if you aren't able to work across the aisle, if you aren't able to work with people that you disagree with. How can someone support you and your campaign? My favorite question uh, in this race is how can people support? you can make sure that you go out and vote on May 24th or vote early and vote for me, Alicia Thomas Searcy for State School Superintendent. Just remember all the S's, State School Superintendent Searcy, real easy to remember. Secondly, donate. It is expensive to run for office because you've got to um, communicate with voters. And so that's mail, that's text messages. Sorry if you don't like the text messages, but we got to do it to, to reach voters. Um, phone calls, it's paying for a team, so it costs money to do that. Um, then uh, people can also follow us on our social media, um, uh, Cersei for State Superintendent on Facebook, Cersei for Superintendent on IG, and four is the number four. And of course, our website is Cersei for Superintendent. And so I would encourage people to check us out, learn about my record, um, understand how important this race is, how important it is for you know, your state school superintendent to have experience leading schools, being a policymaker, getting things done on behalf of kids.